Vegeta, you have a brother, don't you? Oh, yeah, I wonder if he got blown up too. Huh, not that it matters. It's easy to forget just how cruel Vegeta was before he met Goku. On his way to Earth, Vegeta destroyed a planet, casually ending countless lives for his own amusement. How would the Dragon Ball landscape change if Vegeta's past ever caught up with him? This story by Malik Studios aims to answer that question in a big way. In this video, we will learn exactly what Vegeta did to his brother, Rigor, and why Rigor could never forgive him. The story begins with Vegeta still being confused about what exactly he did to Rigor. Vegeta says, a life that I destroyed? And then Rigor begins his story. He says, it was a year after what happened on Planet Palm. My mother was an elite Saiyan. She worked under your father, King Vegeta. Sapari, who is Rigor's wife, lived with us at the time. I was in the infirmary healing a broken arm. My mother had left for a mission of her own after I went in, but Sapari was there to meet me after I came out. We headed for home, only stopping long enough to see mother's friend along the way. By the way, this is Jine, Goku's mom. That's the friend. But when we got home, I knew something was wrong, and I was right. A Saiyan warrior was there, waiting for us. He was so strong, I tried to fight back, but couldn't defend myself against him. But then, he hit Sapari, and I saw red. I don't know how, but Sapari told me I killed him in a single blow. I was hurt, but we were alive. That's when my mother stumbled in, beaten and bloody. Her own squad turned on her. They said she was a traitor, but I know my mother. She never would have betrayed the king. We get a couple close-ups of Vegeta's face. It seems like he's starting to remember what Rigor is talking about. Rigor continues, she said more were coming and we had to escape. She kept two emergency pods at the back of our home. She hurried us into them and set the coordinates. But before we knew it, more soldiers came. There was no time left. She must have known she wouldn't make it and neither would we if she didn't stay to hold them off. I tried to get out. I couldn't just watch her die but she clicked on the pod's remote to launch as soon as the engines were ready. As she did, she was shot in the back, murdered in cold blood. And the bastard who did it? I mean, you guys could all already imagine who it was, right? You see a smoking finger of the person who fired the key blast. And on the next page, it's revealed that it's young Vegeta. You, Rigor says. Just look at that smirk on Vegeta's face. On the next page, we're back to the fight. It looks like something finally snapped for Vegeta. He finally remembers what Rigor is talking about. Rigor continues by saying, so much has occurred since then, but I could never forget what happened that night. I could never. And we see this aura seeping into his eyes and eventually bubbling around his body. This is really dope for a lot of reasons. First of all, it looks a bit like the aura Naruto used to get from the QB. The flashback also just did a pretty good job at setting up some sort of secret power for Rigor. Remember when his eyes started to go red, he instantly one-shotted the warrior who hit Sapari. So this red power, whatever it is, clearly takes Rigor's strength to another level. And so far in the fight, Rigor is just as strong, if not stronger than Vegeta. So this red power, this other level, clearly Vegeta currently does not have an answer to this if it shows up. The backstory is also crazy because it sets up Rigor's motivation perfectly. And ultimately, it's probably the reason why this story is one of my favorites because it raises these questions of morality. First of all, who is the bad guy here? We all love Vegeta because that's who we know. But should Rigor just forgive him for killing his mother? Should Rigor just say, okay, you're a changed man, forget it, we're cool now. I mean, I feel like if I was Rigor, I would be doing the same thing. It reminds me of the scene from what I think was Civil War, the Marvel movie, where Captain America tells Iron Man, fighting us now isn't going to change anything. And Iron Man says, I don't care. He killed my mom. I don't care. He killed my mom. That line just moves me. I don't care about what you have to say, bro. Like, you killed my mom. I don't care about any of this stuff. So, I really like Rigor's motivation. Even the way his powers manifest themselves through his eyes. The same way our sadness manifests themselves through tears. I feel like I could talk about this forever. But, 
let's keep going with the story. All around the planet, the remaining Z warriors sense the immense leap in Rigor's power. Trunks, who is with his girlfriend in a flying car, tells her, take the controls. I have to go. He exits the car and begins flying to Vegeta's location. Goten, who is also with a girl named Palace, says, Palace, I gotta go. He tries to play it off and says, I'll be right back. I'm just heading to the bathroom. Then he also flies to Vegeta's location, saying to himself, I'm sorry, Palace. I'll make it up to you, but I can't ignore this. Vegeta's in trouble. We get another close-up of this power seeping out of Rigor's body. Then a shot of an astonished Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. He says, what kind of power is that? But Sapari looks worried. She says, oh no, not again, and rushes towards Rigor. Vegeta says, what's she doing? As Sapari stands in front of Rigor and says, beloved, please, you need to calm down. She grabs his face in both of her palms and says, look at me, beloved. Come back to me. Come back from that place. I'm here. Rigor begins to remember himself again, saying, S Sapari? He says to her, I'm sorry. I got carried away. It's all right, my love, responds Sapari. You're back now. Watching all of this, Vegeta says, What just happened? At the same time, Sapari says to Rigor, You're getting too worked up. You shouldn't drag this on for too long. You're right, Rigor responds. Let's get this over with. Over on Kami's lookout, Mr. Popo is communicating with the Supreme Kai via his crystal ball. We catch the end of the conversation where Mr. Popo says, and that's the trouble we find ourselves in. Goku should be made aware. We fear that Vegeta may fall in this battle if left alone. It's kind of sad they don't believe in Vegeta, but hey, Supreme Kai responds, that's indeed a dire predicament, Mr. Popo. I will inform Goku. At the same time, there's an explosion behind him. He turns around upset just as soon as he stops wrecking our planet. Popo turns around to Piccolo saying, Piccolo, we managed to reach the Kais, but Piccolo? Piccolo is gone. Just his weighted armor remains. After sensing Rigor's power, he's also heading to the battlefield. Even Pan at school can sense Rigor's immense key. She's with her mom who asks, Pan, are you okay? Are you cold or something? She says, no, I'm fine. And to herself, she thinks, that big power shot up even higher than before. I want to go help, but I'll just be in the way, like last time. Let me just say, I really like the approach to Pan in a lot of these stories. She's way more mature than she was in GT. Anyway, let's keep going. Back to the fight. Rigor is thrashing Vegeta. He stands above him and says, You know, it's hard to imagine as I stand here now that at one time you seemed like darkness incarnate to me. I thought those words you spoke on Planet Palm would always hold true, that I could never catch up to you, the prince. It would seem my hatred has been a powerful motivator. Vegeta looks up at him furious. Rigo continues, now you can join your black-hearted father in the afterlife and my mother's soul can finally rest. Rigor is seconds away from delivering his final attack when he senses an incoming key blast. He's hit from behind, indirectly sheltering Vegeta from the attack. Vegeta leaps out of the way and Rigor menacingly looks back at him. Next to Vegeta, Piccolo lands. Sapari says, where did he come from? There was no reading on the scope. This is pretty dope. It implies that Piccolo is a lot stronger than we remember him, but Rigor didn't seem to care much. He looks at Piccolo and says, what is this? Do you fight for Vegeta? Piccolo responds, for him, no. With him, begrudgingly. You're his ally then, Rigor asks. But before Piccolo could respond, Sapari picks up the power level of more approaching fighters. On the next page, Trunks and Goten have arrived. The Z warriors are standing, allied with Vegeta. More of them, said Rigor. Trunks says to Vegeta, Dad, are you okay? Dad, another child, Rigor says. Vegeta responds, you're all foolish for coming here. Trunks then says to him, you say that like it's something new. Goten then asks, who is this guy? His key is insane. Vegeta, with a somber look, says, it doesn't matter. Rigor overtakes the conversation by saying, I warn you all now, this matter is between Vegeta and I alone. Should you continue to interfere, I will hold no guilt in going through you to get to him. Mm, I'm loving this so much right now. Like, whose side, who side are you guys on? Who needs to win this right now? Let's continue though. Trunk says, so uh, what's the plan? To Vegeta. Vegeta responds, don't have one. He's much stronger than I thought he'll be and might even be stronger still. Piccolo says, stronger still? 
Are you for certain? Vegeta gives him a stern look and says, In his rage, his power began to climb at an almost exponential rate. I believe that what we feel from him now is only marginally what he's fully capable of. This is one thing I love about Vegeta. He completely gets it. Vegeta is a genius fighter. And although he is willing to fight people who are stronger than him, it's never in this wishful, uncalculated way. Anyway, let's keep going. Rigor is unimpressed. Goten says, well, that's just spectacular. So what then? Vegeta looks annoyed and says, without that clown Kakarot, implying that maybe if Goku was there, they would have a chance. We all know how much Vegeta hates having to rely on Goku. The fact that he's even considering it is a testament to just how much of a threat Rigor is. Vegeta says, Piccolo, can you three gain his attention for at least a full minute? Piccolo inquisitively looks at Vegeta and then eventually with a smirk says, Pawns, are we? I don't think making him angrier is a good idea, but with the three of us, a full minute might be doable. Then, Vegeta says, I may have a way. You may have a way? Piccolo says, Yes. It's a long shot, but it's the best I can come up with, Vegeta responds. And you require but a single minute. Piccolo follows up. At least, said Vegeta, and get him into the air. I can't release this in any direction but up. Otherwise, it might break the earth. It seems they're making a plan, Sapari says to Rigor. Rigor responds to her. You shouldn't be so close. I don't want you to get hurt. Likewise, said Sapari. Just, just be careful. Keep your guard up and keep your temper under control, please. Very well, Piccolo said to Vegeta. One minute at least. And then Vegeta grabs his arm. Piccolo, we only get one shot at this. There is no do-over if I miss. Piccolo looks at him and says, in that case, you'd best see to it that your aim is true. Such a dope moment. Very rarely do we see Vegeta respect the Z Warriors, especially someone like Piccolo. And here he's doing it, which again implies that Piccolo isn't just some fodder to him like he is in Dragon Ball Super. Anyway, Piccolo begins his approach to Rigor. Rigor says to Sapari, get back Sapari. Piccolo then says to Trunks and Goten, Goten, Trunks, we're going to need the heavy hitter for this one. We all know what that means, right? Trunks and Goten look at each other with a smirk as Piccolo charges Rigor by himself. Attacking alone? Is he insane? Rigor is the one saying this. While Piccolo is saying to himself, this is gonna hurt. He punches Rigor and unflinchingly, Rigor stares at him directly in his eyes. Piccolo follows up with a flurry of attacks, and although Rigor can visually keep up with all of them, he doesn't even bother to dodge. Rigor then clenches his fist and delivers an earth-shattering blow to the side of Piccolo's face. It sends Piccolo's upper body smashing into the ground. Rigor then says, one obstacle removed. Now for the, before he could finish that statement, he's attacked. A smirking face says, Sorry to keep you waiting, but the Grim Reaper Gotenks has made his return. Super dope. This is a full panel of grown Gotenks. I can't wait till we get to see him in Dragon Ball Super. After Trunks and Goten age a bit, Goten is in his Super Saiyan 3 form right away. Sapari says, who is that? Where'd the other two go? Piccolo says to Goten, you could have gotten here a little sooner. Gotenks responds, hey, sorry, old man, but this was much more dramatic. Piccolo says back to him, I thought getting older would have fixed that attitude. Off to the side, Vegeta is watching. He smirks and says, good job boys. Then he extends his arms and begins to channel a massive amount of ki. Vegeta is preparing an attack the likes of which we've never seen before. Off to the side, Sapari says, what is he doing? At the same time, Piccolo and Gotenks are giving it their all to try and subdue Rigor. Piccolo has him in a headlock while Gotenks delivers his attacks from the front. Rigor then knocks Gotenks away with a powerful punch, then reaches behind his head and grabs Piccolo by the back, swinging him upside down to his front, and then kicks Piccolo in the same direction as Gotenks. This attack seemed to do some serious damage to Piccolo. Gotenks, however, still has some fight in him. He says, sit this out, Piccolo. I got this, and charges back at Rigor. Rigor begins his flurry of attacks against Gotenks, who is actually managing to dodge them. He says, come on, how did Vegeta get knocked around by a slowpoke like you? This infuriates Rigor, who continues his barrage of attacks. In the middle of the fight, however, a special beam cannon is fired at him. From Piccolo, Rigor deflects this attack, sending it flying 
far into the distance. This surprises even Piccolo. The special beam cannon is his strongest attack. Gotenks yells to him, Piccolo, don't worry about me. Just protect Vegeta. Off to the side, Vegeta is still powering up. On her scouter, Sapari cannot believe what's happening to Vegeta's power level. She says, no way. His rating doubled, no, tripled. Gotenks manages to send Rigor flying into the sky and then uses his famous special ability, Galactic Donut, which is just a series of rings, circles created out of his key to restrict Rigor's movements. Goten says, I've got to be honest. I wasn't sure if that would work on you. I'll give it to you. You were tough, but even you weren't a match for the tactical genius of the mighty Gotenks. Furious, Rigor begins to power up. Piccolo yells, get away from him. Rigor breaks the galactic donut, and before Gotenks can get out of the way, he grabs him by the mouth, telling him, be quiet, and then hits him with a punch so powerful, it creates a shockwave between the two. The punch sends Gotenks flying towards the ground, and the impact was strong enough to instantly defuse Trunks and Goten. Rigor yells, enough, I will not be distracted any, and again, before he could finish his sentence, he is surrounded by hundreds of floating orbs of ki, with a smirk, Piccolo says, didn't see that coming, did you? And then collapses all the key balls onto Rigor's body. It creates a massive explosion. Over his shoulder, Piccolo yells, Vegeta, are you done yet? I've used up all my key and all we've done is, but then Piccolo finally senses what's going on with Vegeta. As the dust clears on Rigor, he notices Vegeta too. At this point, Vegeta's power is unbelievable. Sapari so says, this rating, it can't be. With an evil look on his face, Vegeta says to Rigor, Okay, let's see you kick this one. Beloved, watch out, yells Sapari. As Vegeta sends his massive attack upwards towards Rigor, merged final atomic shine, he calls it. This attack is crazy. I can't imagine seeing something like this animated. Just a massive electrifying key blast with Vegeta at its base. The attack blows Sapari and Piccolo away, and there is no time for Rigor to dodge. The attack connects, shaking the entire planet. The blast is so powerful, it creates a crater where Vegeta stood. As the dust clears, Piccolo, barely managing to sit up, says, Unbelievable. Sapari says, No, Rigor. The dust clears further to show Vegeta completely drained of all his key. His eyes are blank and he collapses. And this is where this chapter of the story ends. Now, I am really curious to hear how you guys feel about this story so far, because it's not over, trust me. Should Vegeta win this fight, given all that he's done to his brother, Rigor? Or do you think Rigor is right for wanting to avenge his mother? Which side are you on? Hashtag Team Vegeta in the comments below if you're for Vegeta or hashtag Team Rigor if you think Rigor deserves the win. Guys, that's it for this video. In the next one, some crazy stuff is going to happen. I promise you. Let's just say a friendly face shows up and we still have to learn exactly how Rigor is Vegeta's brother. But this video is already way too long, so we're going to leave it there for now. Thank you guys for all the support. Be sure to pick up a copy of the Yamoshi book. An Amazon link is in the description. Guys, do me a favor. Have yourself a great day. I will be talking to you again real soon. Bye.